I think what we're seeing in France is exactly what's happening in the rest of the world and exactly what we're discussing in Davos. This is the discontinuity or the gap between owning the future, working on reforms, which I'm still very supportive of what it's been doing, and managing the present, the fears of the population. And what we see in France is this opposition between preparing the future, continuing the reform, and people who are talking about the, their daily issues. And I think it was uh, summarized in the sentence, which I think is interesting. He says, the president is preparing the future, talking about the end of the world, we are talking about the end of the month. And we as citizens of this world have to work on the end of the month of our citizens, but we also have to work on owning the future and preparing the future. We... Oh, on, well, on, I was just going to follow. I mean, I was talking to uh, a French businessman um, here earlier, and, and what he said was, you know, the problem is people have lost hope in France that you can become rich and wealthy under the system, which is why they move if they have a business that they think is viable, and they go somewhere where they think they will have low taxes and a supportive business environment. That doesn't describe France at the moment. And when people lose that hope that they can become wealthy in their home country, you've got problems. Uh, yes, it's a challenge. But I think that when President Macron was elected, there was this hope, and it's already still there, that uh, France is back and the technology investment and 56% of the graduates want to be entrepreneurs still. So there's still this dynamic. I think that the Gilets Jaunes is exemplifying the issue of citizens that are not in main cities, not in Bordeaux or secondary city, they are in even smaller cities and they are struggling with some of the issues of daily life. And what amplifies the thing is changing the rules on the speed limit, combined with the increase of gasoline price, which had dramatic impact on the life of people. Mm. Um Let's move on this conversation slightly because um, I know that you know you're 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 involved in the conversation about AI here and the role in shaping the digital uh, technology as well. Had a lot of conversations in the last 48 hours with uh, Jean-Pascal Tricoy, who is in a very similar place actually. He's looking at what digitalization will mean for the globe, let alone France as well as well. But retooling populations, so it follows on from the conversation that you and Jeff were just having as well. How good or bad is Europe at the moment at retooling populations and, and actually getting over their fears about digitalization, what it means for their current lives and what it can mean for their future lives instead? The challenge we have is we all know that artificial intelligence will improve globally the society. You know, we will be better at uh, doing diagnostic for medical uh, disease. We will be better, we will be less car accidents. Uh, but what everyone is fearing is what's going to happen to my children, to my job, and we are, have a tendency to oppose humans and machines. One of the things that we discuss in Davos and we have been discussing with clients is we have to change the narrative. We have to work on human augmented intelligence. We have to explain to the citizen how they will be augmented, what artificial intelligence can bring to them. The other challenge which you mentioned is artificial intelligence will change the way we do work and will remove a lot of repetitive work, mm -hmm. including intellectually repetitive work. The challenge is it might remove them faster then it creates a job. And the biggest challenge we have is education, retooling, and removing this fear, which is coming not only from artificial intelligence, not only from the end of the month, but also from China, from some other issues. Mm. We have to work in Europe and in the rest of the world on the hope, which you mentioned, explaining people what is the benefit and how Europe, and I think, for example, Altmaier is pushing on a burst of AI and initiatives, France and Germany, which are not moving as fast as we would like, in order to retake control of the narrative. I think what we're seeing today is a challenge on the narrative.